So folks, uh, I've got in my hands my video camera so we can record this conversation with uh, our very own J.W. Jones. He released his uh, latest recording called Sonic Departures and uh, literally as a follower of J.W. Uh, it was amazingly off the beaten path. Um, <laughs> You currently you're living in Toronto, Ottawa, Ottawa, yeah. and were you born and raised in Ottawa, staying in the area, or? Okay. Yeah, born and raised here in Ottawa, the nation's capital. <laughs> um, the you play guitar, you also sing, so, uh, but is it any particular instrument uh, that you prefer? I mean, uh, I'm, I'm definitely a guitar player at heart. What can I say? I, I started on drums and then I eventually switched to guitar um, after seeing BB King live in concert when I was 15 years old. So that was that was all it took for me to want to pick up the guitar and see what I could do on that thing. Oh, nice. Uh, how long have you been singing slash songwriting slash playing? Well, I started playing guitar when I was about. 15 or 16 years old and mm -hmm. um, I guess I started writing songs a couple of years into that and uh, a couple of those songs ended up making it onto my first album which was released in year 2000 and um, yeah I've just been at it ever since <laughs> uh, now uh, apart from BB King was there any other push or influence that actually brought you into the crossroads of the blues yeah, well, when I was playing drums, I was listening to a lot of Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin, stuff like that, and I think my real entrance to blues was was through those guys. I mean, seeing that this guy named Steve Ray Vaughan played uh, a Jimi Hendrix song or two, and then I found him, and then I found Jimmy Vaughan and the Fabulous Thunderbirds, and, and once you start digging, you know, it all goes back to the originators, Muddy Waters, B.B. King, uh, Buddy Guy, you know, Howlin' Wolf, all that stuff, so... I started to realize Led Zeppelin and Hendrix, they were playing Willie Dixon songs, and um, and then I started listening to blues, and that's what really brought me into it, and um, and then all the different subgenres within blues, of course, you know, which I've, I've definitely enjoyed a whole bunch of them. Um, now, tell me about your sonic departures. What brought about this uh, playfulness in the, in the CD? I mean, if we take a look at its audacious and your take on Bye Bye Love, uh, you basically I was tickled pink. <laughs> yeah, thank no, you. really, it's it's it, it, this this was released very re very recently, uh, yep, beginning of the Friday. year. Uh, well, actually, officially, it's been released just this past Friday. Yeah, you're right. Uh, but I mean, it it it. It's amazing. From oh, from start oh. to end, um, you actually show your chops. You actually redid uh, a song that I remember that was entirely yours. It was the Blue Jean Jacket song. Yeah. Um, now, out of out of the songs that you play, is there any particular one that you absolutely enjoy that you can hold closer to your heart every time that you either play a gig or? Uh, do something for charity or for an event? Wow, that's a, that's a great question. I mean, I, I love all kinds of the songs. I mean, all the songs on this album for different reasons. You know, of course, I have a couple little favorites, but um, the album opens with three originals, and, and they're songs that I've... The first two, anyway, are songs I've written with, um, like Blue Jean Jacket, for example. I wrote that with Tom Hambridge in, in Nashville and um, and Richard Fleming, and, and that... To me, is just a that, that's a that's a legit song for me. I do really actually have a blue jean jacket. I used to have it on all the time when I was younger, and I brought it to blues festivals and had everybody sign it. You know, I have autographs on there from Luther Allison and Anson Funderburg and uh, that's a it's a huge list. Kid Ramos, even Tony D from here in Ottawa. Like, <laughs> it's it's full of autographs. Anyway, that that that's why we wrote that song together. Is is a true story. Made it a love song. You know, made it cool. 
and and to re-record it on this album with the full 13 piece horn section and 17 piece band um yeah it was really cool it's a whole different animal now and Kaz Kazanoff of the Texas Horns wrote the horn charts for this one, so oh, nice. very cool. And then uh, the second song on the album, Same Mistakes, is a tune I wrote with uh, Dick Cooper of the Cooper Brothers. And uh, I love that one too because it's really got kind of a soul blues vibe to it. Um, it's a tune I've, I've enjoyed playing for a few years. Uh, but one other one I will mention for sure is, and this comes down to the recording and the production and everything we put into it, um, is snatching it back and that tune to me is just super super cool because we have a really interesting intro on it that we we worked on and and when i made this album all of the production was done during covid so i was in my home the producer was in his home we were sharing screens and audio over the internet and that's how we recorded this whole thing so <laughs> at one point my daughter who was 15 months old at the time was here in my office and she's was so obsessed with my guitar picks she always wanted to hold them and carry them around so she actually came in and she kept going pick pick <laughs> so so eric eggleston <laughs> the producer said man put a microphone in front of her and record her singing that we'll use it somehow and i said okay so i i did that and then he took the sound clip and tuned it to the same key of the song snatching it back turned it into a pad like a keyboard sound and uh put some reverb on it and, and just made it sound super cool and that became part of the intro of the song Snatching It Back. So there are a bunch of tunes on this album that, that have some kind of meaning to me, whether it's a song I've written with uh, with a friend or just, you know, the production values. You know, my wife Britt sings on a couple tunes. You mentioned both the songs she sings prominently on, which are Bye Bye Love and It's Audacious. And so, yeah, it's, it's just been a really cool project for me, and uh, I'm really, really proud of it, the whole album. <laughs> Um, now, with COVID, of course, unfortunately, you're not really touring. Um, what would you say, are you currently even doing any gigs or any um, virtual gigs in regards to uh, presenting the album and doing a show centered around the new release? Well, not so much centered around the new release. Um Earlier on in the pandemic, I did a couple live streaming concerts. You know, it seemed like everybody was doing it at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, and then more recently, we've done a couple of outdoor shows. So I've played three times, I think. And uh, I have like another one on the schedule. But I mean, it, it's definitely a rough time for touring musicians. I had to make the decision today that a six-week fall tour is just not going to happen across North America because... You know, there are some places like California and Vegas that are saying, yeah, come on over, no problem, let's do it. And then in some of the lesser affected places, such as British Columbia, they're saying, we can't do it. We don't have, you know, the capacity to warrant doing half capacity and that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. um, it's definitely a tough time for touring, and uh, we're not going to be able to tour this album like I've done in the past. But at the same time, I kind of went into it knowing that that, that was a possibility, and You know, I hadn't even planned on releasing this as a full-length record until COVID hit. And it was because COVID hit that I was like, I've got to do something with my time. I've got to do something productive here. And um, initially, this was just going to be like a four-song EP or something that I would put on the website. And then as the producer and I started working on it, we were like, man, this actually sounds really, really good. We need to, we need to make this a real record. So that's what pushed it in that direction. I'm glad you actually made it into more than just the four song EP because the, the quality, the, the worksmanship, the invested time actually shows entirely from track one to track nine. <laughs> Thank uh, you. <laughs> um, now, curr currently you're recently married, you have a 15 year old daughter. Uh, you married uh, 15 <laughs> year old, sorry, 15. <laughs> My apologies. Uh, you married last year and you were super proud and everyone was sending you accolades. I remember that. And, uh, but uh, how, give it the fact that it's maybe a year and five months that you've been married uh, officially? Longer uh, than that. A couple, it's been a couple of years, actually. Two years, three years? Yeah. Okay. And, I guess two and a half years, yeah. Okay, so in those years, would you... Uh, have any um, 
<laughs> hindsight in regards to how it actually increased or um, assisted you with your blues? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I, I knew Britt could sing when we first met, and um, she hadn't done it professionally or anything like that, but it, it's definitely inspired me in many different ways, and she works with me on a lot of my projects, both on the business side and musically, as you can see. Um, she's performed with us on stage in, in Spain to like 15,000 people, you know, and, and, uh, and then being on this record. So it's been really, really cool to have that, um, that kind of relationship that can, you know, be both on the personal side and, you know, the business side as well. It's, it's, uh, it's an incredible partnership and, uh, and I love it. <laughs> um, there's so many questions that, I, that, that that come to mind in regards to what you've done in the past, but realistically, we've covered them all. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it, just the fact that I missed you coming when you came down the one time that you decided to come down to the Maritimes in Sackville, uh, which was, what, 10 years ago? Close to 15. I, I, I mean, I've played Sackville a couple times and played the Harvest Jazz and Blues Festival probably three or four times. Yeah, um, go figure. I missed every single time that you went to either one, and go figure. But that said, um, during your downtime when you were touring, doing your your festival uh, rendezvous and whatnot, uh, what would you say your favorite hobby would have been or is? Wow, hobby. I don't even know what that means. I, I feel like my hobby is my career. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, I, it's a strange thing. When your hobby and your career are your passion, uh -huh. you find plenty to do right there. I mean, uh, one thing I do enjoy doing uh, from a creative side is, you know, the promo stuff behind the scenes, like making the videos. If you check out the video for Sonic Departures, mm -hmm. um, I had it shot by someone else, obviously, but I did all the editing and putting it all together. And I really enjoy doing creative things like that. And, um, you know, like I said, it's weird when your hobby is your passion because it, it – or your career is your passion, sorry, because it all kind of filters through that way anyway. So if I'm not hanging out with my daughter and my wife and, and the other girls, then I'm, you know, I'm working on music. Um, and uh, last question, what would you say is your favorite dish? Food and music, especially for blues, tends to um, mesh together. Uh, yeah, but yeah. Uh, do you have a, a specific dish that you tend to gravitate to if you're being offered that dish? Oh, I mean, if I had the option, I'd be eating Greek food probably every night. <laughs> Greek food is my favorite. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, well uh, Jay, uh, I have to say that you're you're one of a kind in the blues community, and I'm happy that you released this brand new gem to actually entertain the masses. Um, I wish you and Britt and your baby girl the best in uh, the weeks to come and the months to come. But thank you so thank much you. for taking this time to actually showing your face and giving us your voice during this interview. Thanks so much, Anika. It's great to uh, chat with you. Well, have a nice one. All right, brother. Take care.